Family channels, especially on YouTube, are fun, entertaining, and interesting to watch. But at what point does it become exploitation on the part of the parent? Family vlogging is very popular on YouTube, but for those who are unfamiliar with it, let's give you a definition. Family vlogging is when parents film their family's day-to-day -day lives, focusing on their children in particular, and upload it as a vlog, that is, a virtual vlog. While it may appear to be a cute idea, there are many debates about the challenge that come with this type of vlogging. Ordinarily, vlogging entails a person choosing to share parts of their daily life and uploading them to the internet. But when it comes to family vlogging, however, it is up to the parents to decide what content to upload or not upload. From children's inability to control their internet presence to the highly questionable conduct of charging for access to your child, it reflects a challenge that family vloggers, mommy bloggers, and influencers have all faced in recent years. Is is it moral to use your child for likes? With few laws governing it, parents are free to record and post videos of their child for all to see. And to make matters worse, child labor laws did not even apply to YouTube until the darkest side of family YouTube channels was revealed. Consider the case of Ryan Kajai, a 10-year-old with over 30 million subscribers on YouTube and over 50 million views. He has become one of YouTube's highest paid stars. Ryan came to popularity for his online show, Ryan's World, which features him unboxing toys on camera for his preteen audience. In 2019, his fame brought in more than $26 million for his parents. He was really only eight years old at the time and had over eight YouTube channels and new videos being released almost every day. It's no secret that Kajai works around the clock. Whether that be playing with toys or doing interviews, his parents reap the benefits of his efforts due to his minor status. However, many viewers have questioned the ethics of filming your child in order to earn advertising and sponsorship dollars. When family vloggers are included in the mix, the situation becomes even more troubling. In the last five years, family vlogging has exploded on YouTube. Parents record their young children as they play, go on vacation, review toys, and do other activities. Kids from all over the world tune in in large numbers, which explains why there have been a number of incidents surrounding family vloggers in recent years. One such incident would be the Stoffers case. The Stoffers are YouTubers who recorded their adoption journey. And in 2020, they disclosed that they put up for adoption the child after making a lot of money off of him. James, who runs a successful car detailing YouTube channel, and his wife Micah from Ohio had been capturing their parenting journey on their YouTube channel since 2014. They only became well known after they started documenting their adoption journey. The Stoffers began the adoption process in 2017. Micah Stoffer announced that she and her husband were adopting a special needs child from China, whom they would name Huxley. So this family decided to rehome Huxley after creating more than 27 monetized videos cataloging the adoption, promoting a fundraiser for Huxley's special needs, and charging $5 per person to unlock a puzzle piece featuring Huxley's face. While the Stoffers' tears moved a few fans, the large majority condemned them for their irresponsible behavior. But what do other influencers have to say about this? Sophie Ross, a freelance writer and copywriter who frequently publicizes and criticizes influencers' behavior in an effort to hold public figures years accountable, accused Stoffer of making adoption her brand and making herself the victim. Sophie Ross tweeted, extremely depressed reading about the influencer who raised funds to adopt a son, made this her brand, discovered he had special needs, secretly rehomed him, blocked people asking about him after her followers helped fund the adoption, and put out a video making herself the victim. Ross went on to say that Stoffer only posted the explanation video after her sponsors complained that the couple gave up their child after joyfully profiting off of him for years. The thread received hundreds of likes and retweets, and Ross wasn't the only one who took to Twitter to express their outrage. Others have criticized Stoffer's parenting, pointing out what they consider to be questionable content from the last few years. Here's a pic of two-year-old Huxley with his hands
hands duct taped by his parents, Micah and Jim Stoffer, as punishment for sucking his thumb as a coping mechanism, when their older children also sucked their thumbs and were never punished. One Twitter user wrote, posting a screenshot from one of Stoffer's vlogs. Not everyone wishes to have children, and that's fine, really, as people choose not to have children for a variety of reasons, some of which are very much valid and should be respected. However, if you decide to have children, it is your responsibility as a parent to raise that child, whether or not that child has special needs. The Stoffers, not only did they choose to have children, they chose to adopt a child, but then not just any child, but one with special needs. Seems to me like they only wanted him for the sympathy that comes with him, which thereby results in more views, more clicks, and as we all know, more money. But once they realize they can't cope with it anymore, off you go, poor Huxley. And this can be seen all over the internet with family vlogs. Children are being exploited every day, all in the name of content. Remember when singer Pink expressed concern about the sexualization of teen star Piper Raquel on the internet and pointed the fingers at the parents after Piper Raquel posted YouTube videos and Instagram photos in which she posed in a bikini? How many kids like Piper Raquel are being exploited by their parents? Pink wrote on Twitter. And at what point do the rest of us say this isn't okay for a 13 year old to be posing in a bikini whilst her mother takes the photo? For those of you who don't know, Piper Raquel has over 8 million YouTube subscribers and over 5 million Instagram followers. Her channel is described in her bio as a place to watch crazy challenges such as boyfriend challenges, Challenges, crush challenges, and 24-hour challenges. Pink has been tuning in. The eighth grader couldn't believe it. I don't think Pink has ever seen one of my YouTube videos because if she did, she'd see it's just my friends and me having fun and acting like ourselves, Raquel told Today Parents. The content we make is the kind of stuff anyone can watch. Tiffany, Piper's mother, responded to Today by saying she's just trying to help her daughter achieve her goals and that Piper has always had a strong love of performing. Piper, who knows that Pink was 14 years old when she joined the band Basic Instinct, went on to say, they're only sexual if you view us that way. Why was it okay for her to follow her dreams, but not okay for me to follow mine? In an Instagram post, Courtney Stodden defended singer Pink's comments by criticizing the parents of popular YouTuber Piper Raquel. It's hard for children to separate attention they receive online from predatory behavior from adults, Courtney wrote. It's our responsibility as a society to step up and protect our kids as much as we can from falling victim to this cycle of digital grooming. As adults, we can see what they can't. Courtney may not have mentioned Raquel or Pink in the text of the caption, but it is made clear whom the caption was referring to with the hashtags, hashtag Piper Raquel and hashtag Pink, while also tagging the songstress. Three thumbnails from 14-year-old Piper Raquel's YouTube videos were reportedly removed for violating the platform's child safety policy. YouTube drew thumbnails from the videos titled, My Boyfriend Reacts to Fashion Nova Swimsuit Haul, body shaming prank, my boyfriend walked in on me, and wearing a hot outfit, then leaving him. Cute reaction. Kat Tenbarge, senior reporter on Insider's digital culture desk, took to her Twitter page. 14-year-old Piper Raquel and her mother are defending themselves after Pink called her content exploitative, Kat wrote. Piper said Pink must not watch her YouTube videos. Not so long after this, Piper's mother, Tiffany Smith, was sued. 11 former members of Piper Raquel's Piper Squad have filed a lawsuit against the teen's mother and her boyfriend. According to the lawsuit, Tiffany and her boyfriend are accused of physical, emotional, verbal, and sexual abuse, as well as financial exploitation. Tiffany Smith is also accused of being inappropriate with the children. But more on this in the next video. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. So for now, I recommend that you double check that YouTube content that you're watching is appropriate for both parties. Don't get me wrong, some children's content on YouTube is completely all right, and children are all over, so it'd be absurd to suggest that we remove all of them from YouTube. Rather, make sure that the YouTubers you're watching are decent parent role models. Sprinkle of Glitter, Philip DeFranco, and Laser Corn are just a few examples. Examples. These YouTubers also include their children in some of their videos while also ensuring the safety of their children. Hopefully, with both viewers and content producers working on this issue, these questions concerning family vlogging on YouTube will be resolved in the near future. If you'd like to watch more videos like this or want to know more about Piper Raquel's mother, Tiffany Smith's lawsuit, click the link in the description below and click on the notification bell to get notified when we release new content.